And now joining us in the studio for more on the latest UNRWA controversy, we have Dr. Martin Sherman, the founder and executive director of the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies. And via Skype, we have the director of the Center for Near East Policy, David Bedein. Thank you both very much for joining me. Thank you for having us. Uh, now, David, I actually want to start with you. You know, what, what do you make of this latest controversy? You know, because you've been working against UNRWA with your organization for, for many years now. You know, what do you make of this latest controversy? How does that fit in with what you've been saying for uh, all not, these years? Not about, it's not a matter of for or against. It's a matter of studying the facts. For 32 years, the center has been putting out material on UNRWA, on the issue of UNRWA education, UNRWA schools, UNRWA hospitals, UNRWA services, which turn into terror. Now, what they, they cannot find funds for the basics in the hospitals and clinics. However, 100,000 children were taken from UNRWA schools last week for military training by Hamas and other terror organizations with the full permission of UNRWA all year long. UNRWA runs these indoctrination seminars. They all, all the donor countries know what's going on, and now the time has come for the donor countries, 67 donor countries, to ask what's happening to $1.2 billion. And what we have here is the, is the, the, the head, the um, tip of the iceberg of something that's developing, which is going to become very, very big. Because we've met with the, with the highest levels of the UN Secretary General's office, and, and they, they themselves acknowledge that they don't know really what's happening on her. There's not really a, accountability. And what we've been asking the donor nations to do for years is please go to the ethics committee and find out what's going on because there is a, there's a, a, a disconnect between the, so the, the money for health, education, and welfare, which seems to be disappearing. And 100,000 youngsters, we, we have a crew right now which is filming. 100,000 youngsters from UNRWA schools going through military training, and that doesn't seem like a, what, what, what should be happening with children who attend a United Nations school. Sure. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Um, well, f first of all, uh, to put it in, in broad, uh, broad brushstrokes, I think what the reviewers should understand is that uh, UNRWA is a pernicious anomaly. Uh, all the refugees on the face of the globe come out of the auspices of an organization called the UN High Commission yeah. for, for Refugees, sure. except the Palestinians. They have a separate organization called UNRWA, which deals exclusively with the Palestinians, which has its own definition of who is a refugee and what the mandate is. Now, whilst most refugee uh, populations decrease over time, the number of refugees in the Palestinians balloons in time. So what, what we're seeing now is why I welcome these new criticisms but basically, as, uh, as David correctly said, they're the tip of the iceberg because they pale into insignificance sure. against what Jason, uh, uh, Jason Greenblatt said was a, 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 a broken and unsustainable model sure. because the definition and the mandate that, that, uh, uh, that UNRWA has for dealing with refugees basically perpetuates the problem that it's supposed to solve. I mean, it's by it, definition, yeah. By, by, by yeah. definition, uh, UNRWA can only take care of the humanitarian needs, and because of its definition of, of handing uh, refugee status uh, uh, over generations, it's an expanding population. So the fact that you can only take care of humanitarian uh, needs for an expanding population means so that you perpetuate the problem uh, that you're supposed to solve. So my question is, you know, following up also from what David said earlier, is that you know we've just learned recently that Switzerland has suspended payments for uh, for UNRWA. Sure. Do you see other nations following suit? And and you know, do you see this as kind of again with the t as the tip I, of the iceberg I, I, kind of I, I, argument, I or is this so. really just the I, only thing I, I that bothers so. them? I hope so. And in many ways, uh, paradoxically, it's United the United States has taken the lead rather than Israel, because what we are seeing is Israel for years has basically shielded UNRWA from the truth. I remember, I haven't been dealing with it as long as David, but in 2005, I gave a, a, an address to a Knesset subcommittee about the, precisely what David mentioned and, and what I've been talking about. And in front of me, I had an adversarial foreign ministry uh, team uh, from the Israeli foreign ministry trying to protect UNRWA. So for, for in, in, in many ways, the situation has been nurtured by, by, uh, by uh, Israel's dereliction, dereliction of duty of bringing the truth to the public. Okay, so now, so now, David, I actually want to turn back to you. You know, going again kind of off of what uh, Dr. Sherman said, you know, do you, do you believe that the UNHCR, the High Commission for Refugees, 
has the wherewithal, be it in funding uh, facilities, etc., to absorb UNRWA's responsibilities tomorrow? Divert the it's budget. A, it's a much easier situation. It's a much easier situation. There are 59 camps run by UNRWA. UNRWA could very easily adopt the policies of UNHCR and in, in, encourage people to be rehabilitated or to migrate from those places. Uh, all we need is a policy decision. Now, I want to say something. There's 12 different parliaments that are right now debating the subject of UNRWA reform, as is the U.S. Congress. The good news of this conversation is that in six weeks' time, the UNRWA mandate will expire completely. That means that it has to be renewed now in order for them to continue. The concept of renewal of UNRWA, this should be, this should be straight on the, on the idea of policy reform, uh, a change in the education system, not allowing military training, and to adopt the model of UNHCR to let them leave. And the, follow, the, the thing that the report, the new investigative report put out by the UN itself, to have clear supervision over transparency, to make sure that money that's supposed to go to humanitarian needs does. And the Israeli government, as opposed to what Martin witnessed in 2005, is squarely behind the concept of honor reform now. Now they have to follow through at the UN with the other Western countries who doubt what's happening to their funds. Uh, Dr. Sure. Well, you know, I, I, as what you mentioned before, asking if the, the High Commission has yes. the budget to, to take on these duties. Do you, well, well I, I, I would prefer a system whereby the UNRWA is dissolved and the budgets are diverted either to... So rather than a change in policy or absorbing the UNHCR's yeah, kind of... Yeah, because how long... It's, there's no guarantee that you can control UNRWA if it's... But, is there, any, but is there any guarantee now... I mean, because I have to assume that if the UNHCR were to absorb UNRWA's responsibilities and, the, and UNRWA were to dissolve, you know, those existing stations where UNRWA is would probably be turned over to the UNHCR, and it would really just be a change in staff. No, and no, it wouldn't be a change. How would that translate no, no, into... Because, because the, the UN High Commission uh, has a policy where you can't transfer refugee status over... over uh, so would that automatically maybe cut... No, no, but also they can resettle. They can resettle refugees in third-party countries, which UNRWA can't do. UNRWA can no, only take care of the humanitarian aid. And, but, but I think rather than... Even, even better than transferring the budgets... To, to the High Commission, transfer it to the Arab governments where these, sure. where the, where these right. refugees are, on the condition that they absorb them in those countries where they've been resident for, for decades and even express the will of becoming part of permanent residents uh, of, those, right, of well, those countries. You must David, understand David I'm, I'm so sorry I have to, I'm so sorry that I have to cut it off. David, one thank you so much for joining us. One sentence. UNRWA does everything possible to prevent the uh, the, to prevent the, the absorption of, 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 of the youngsters from UNRWA into other frameworks. It could very easily say, go elsewhere and stop the, the theme. The theme of UNRWA education right now is right of return by force of arms. That has to stop. All right. David Bedeen, Dr. Martin Sherman, thank you so much for joining us.